Today I'll be explaining the music of John Coltrane, more specifically his three tonic system and how to apply that to standard changes for pieces. What some people don't understand is that the idea for this three tonic system was not originally Coltrane's. It was found in a 1947 publication by a Russian-born composer named Nicholas Slominsky who would make a couple appearances on The Tonight Show and was good friends with Frank Zappa, named his dog after a Frank Zappa song. So anyway, this system is really sort of elegant and interesting and is not too difficult to grasp. So what it is is, you know, take an octave, I have E to E here, and if you divide the octave in half perfectly, you get a tritone, or in this case, a B flat. Now, if I take my octave again, so this is one piece, if I divide it in half, if I divide it into uh, thirds, I get an augmented chord. I get an E, a G sharp, and a C. And I'm going to use an harmonic spellings just because they're easier. But I go that, and if I keep going, if I divide into quarters, I get, you know, I get a diminished scale. I get a diminished chord, rather. I get an E, G, B flat, and D flat. And so on and so forth. So Coltrane took the idea of equally dividing the octave into thirds instead of in half or in quarters like some other people would do, and decided to make each of those thirds a tonic center in a piece. So he would use a G in giant steps, we're in G major. So he would use a G major chord as one center, and then go up a major third to B major, and that make that another tonic center, and go up a major third to a it would be D-sharp, but in jazz we don't like sharp keys, so it's going to be E-flat major. So you go from G-major to B-flat major to E-flat major over and over and interchange them throughout the piece and create, you know, a, a, a sound that moves sort of from our G-major to our uh, B-major to our E-flat major. throughout the piece, and it sounds really kind of cool on the record. Now how we actually apply this concept can be somewhat difficult, but it just takes practice. And we're going to work on a pretty simple tune to begin with. It's Tune Up by Miles Davis. So we are in three keys in this piece, D major, C major, and B flat major. So we're going to start up with D major. Now you want to always end on the same sort of chord as, you know, the piece. So we're going to put our D flat, our D major chord here. And then, like I said, in giant steps, he just adds fives or two fives to it. So we're going to add five to D major, which is going to be an A7 chord. We need to um, then put a major third above this there. So normally we would write F sharp, but because we're in jazz, we don't like sharp keys because we have to play with a lot of saxophones. So we're going to make this G flat. Now we have to put um, another cadence in there, so we have to put our, uh, our, our D flat 7 chord to lead to that, which then we have to go major third up from this, so B flat. We have our 5 of B flat, which is our F7, and then the chord we started with, E minor 7. And suddenly, we have a whole new piece and a whole new set of changes that we can work with. Now, and again, we, we saw that we took our three tonics. We have the, uh, the D, and we went a major third up from that, and a major third up from that again. So that's our three tonic system like we discussed, and it creates a whole new way to work with the tone. So I've applied the system to the rest of the piece, and we can see that besides the first and the last chord of each line, it really doesn't look like the same piece at all. And Coltrane did this all the time. In fact, a lot of his most famous pieces are just not quite contrafacts, but are based on tunes like this. Like this is actually a John Coltrane tune, but you don't know it as tune-up. You know it as countdown. Another piece that showed up on the album, Giant Steps, and is really a fantastic piece to, to work with all this with. The other thing to look at when you're looking at the music of uh, Coltrane is that his soloing style on 
over changes like this is not quite what we're used to. We're used to, you know, the... kind of stuff. But what Coltrane did was he took a lot simpler licks, like um, over the, the dominant chords or the major chords. He would just play, you know, one, two, three, five of the... The, the scale, but he would do that like very quickly and he'd do the stuff like that and just run with that so quickly and could throw those little short licks out everywhere. Like if you look at Countdown, whenever he gets to this E minor chord or whenever he plays this A flat chord, he plays the same lick. I, I've looked at this, whenever he plays like the E minor, he plays a... Um, Five, flat three, two, one, going down to E. And he can just do things like this all over the place. And that's really what makes Coltrane sound so unique. Another thing that Coltrane would do a lot is he'd exploit these minor third and augmented fifth intervals, things that are found in diminished scales and um, really like run with um, diminished patterns while still keeping in those simplified simplified licks that he was doing. Like something he would do would be run up diminished chords or would take the, the one, two, three, five major major thing, take this and then run that pattern up a diminished up a diminished chord. So stuff like that over over these patterns instead of just staying rigidly based in the roots. And this is how he could expand on this even while staying within those simple patterns that he'd practiced. That does it for Coltrane and I'll see you guys later.